Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel again this week for a week of fantastic content. So today we're going to talk about the, well, the decimation, as it were, of the middle class, predominantly in the USA, but this also extends to other Western countries. Now, if you were to look back to 1971 in the United States, the middle class was somewhere around 65%. If you look at the middle class today, or at least if we look back to 2022, it's now below 50%. So that's quite a large group of people, of families who have shifted. Now, what we're seeing a lot of at the moment is people and studies coming out and surveys and all sorts of things saying that all of the people in the middle class have shifted downwards so they're getting poorer. Actually, if you look at the data accurately and correctly, this isn't quite correct. A lot of those people, the middle class has definitely shrunk. A lot of those people have now gone into what they're calling the lower class. I don't like to use these terms, but alas, these are the terms that we have to use. A lot of the middle class are now going down into the lower class and getting squeezed. And I'm going to show you in this video um, at least 10 different ways and reasons why this is happening and why I believe as a financial forecaster that this is only going to get worse in the years ahead. And I'll show you that when we come on to the debt rate climbing, the savings rate falling and what's happening with wages, plus the inflation, these hidden taxes and other things that are going on right now. And the reason that this is quite a topic close to my heart is because if you've looked at any of my historical pieces on the channel, I know they're a little bit hard to find these days, but you'll recall I've done a lot of pieces, a lot of videos on how wealth divide affects social economic breakdowns and a lot of um, issues and how they accelerate. And I talked about this in early 2020 and how we'd see this as we went through 21 and 22, 23 towards 25, much past that. I can't really see at this stage. But what have we seen in 2020? We saw mass breakdowns of societal conflict and issue. We saw it in 21, we saw it in 22, and now again, we're seeing this in 23. And I've said before, I know it's not popular opinion uh, and somewhat controversial, but I do believe that some of these events are deliberate and the media deliberately puts these out to cause these strife between communities and between peoples. Um, and you know my view on this, I believe that we are all one people, we're a, a strong community, but alas, the media puts out a lot of stuff to try and divide us. And this is uh, an ongoing process. We're seeing it again at the, at the moment. And the reason this is so dangerous is, uh, and you'll recall the strongest example I gave you was the French Revolution, where we know what happened there. That's about as extreme as an example as I can give you. But we're seeing this all over the world at the moment. The reason you don't see it on the mainstream media is because they don't want to put this out there. But we are seeing this very significant breakdown at the moment with social cohesion. But let's get into the topic now then. And I'm just going to run through a, a lot of different things. And actually, let's go to the shared screen. This might help uh, those of you who are visual learners a little better here. But what you're seeing is you're seeing the, the lower income bracket increase, but you're also seeing the upper income bracket increase as well. Now, you've heard me talk a lot on AI, artificial intelligence, and why I feel this is the biggest danger that we have above all other dangers right now. And I think that 2023, as debt becomes more expensive, as corporate earnings start to crash alongside higher unemployment because these things go hand in hand. And as we go into an uh, employment scarring cycle, we are going to see a lot more problems in this regard because what are companies going to do, especially the tech companies, as they're making mass layoffs, they're also ramping up their investment into artificial intelligence. Why? Because even though the forecast sounded crazy when I said this three years ago, AI is going to start destroying middle class and lower income jobs on a scale that I don't really think anyone appreciates right now. This is going to be 
far more severe than really anyone can see at the moment. And this is not going to just take factory jobs and uh, all of these sort of tech jobs as well. This is also going to start to eat into other jobs. You're going to see it eat into um, the medical industry, uh, doctors and nurses and all sorts of things. Surgery will be performed by surgery robots in the future. You're going to see it in the legal profession. You're going to see it in all the professions that were previously very difficult to get into. You had to be very intelligent or at least, if not very intelligent, had to spend a lot of time at school and passing all the right exams. AI is going to just rip through the economy. But let's um, pivot slightly and let's look at some easier things here. But let's just look at something as simple as travel at the moment. Look how this is affecting everything from Disney. People talk about Disney as if it's affordable these days. It's not. Disney is not affordable. Three nights from $1,699 per person. What about over the Christmas period? Well, four nights, $899 a person. You want to visit Paris? Five nights from $2,399 a person. Italy, 12 nights from $2,599 a person. Now imagine if you have a family of four and you want to take a trip like this. Well, that's over $10,000 just in your basics, actually getting there, the hotel costs and some food, but not all food. Even Legoland, three nights from $400 per person. And this doesn't even include all the other stuff. As you know, I just took a, a trip I was away for the last month. You don't think about things like the taxi to and from the airport, very expensive. What about your medical insurance for the trip? What about all the other meals and other travel costs? There is so much now that goes into a family vacation. It's become very, very expensive. Flight costs as well have ballooned like you would not believe. The next point is vehicle costs. The average non-luxury vehicle price reached a record of $45,000 just recently. And that's an average non-luxury. Average luxury vehicle, $66,600. Average electric vehicle, $61,500 now. And if we look at the average monthly cost on a new car, that was $700 per month in the third quarter of 2022. So this is another thing to contend with. It's the cost of vehicles. As you know, again, this was a forecast from back in early 21 period where because of the supply chain breakdowns, we discussed how used cars would become more expensive, but then they would dip somewhere late 2022 into 23. And I think that's still fairly accurate. I think we're going to continue to see that but new car prices would go up as a result of a huge amount of things from inflation and supply chain breakdowns and staff shortages and all sorts of other costs. But I do think as more AI and more mechanization comes in, eventually this will bring down the price of these vehicles. But then on the flip side, my views really center around, well, what's going to happen in the economy? What is going to happen with this breakdown of globalization that we've seen. What about the issues that we're seeing in China, where the one child policy has now had these dramatic and drastic negative consequences on this worker shortage, which is only going to get worse over the next 20 years. Some of these forecasts I've seen for China becoming number one in the world very shortly. Maybe, but what if it only happens for a short period of time? The USA has already destroyed their sort of tech industry in a way by cutting them off from the semiconductor manufacturing chips. And not just that, all the technology around it. That's why I made that video saying the USA really isn't there to defend Taiwan. They're there to defend the microchip industry, at least until TSMC brings all that manufacturing online in the USA then the USA won't even care about defending Taiwan. But you're in a race against the clock here, really, for this to transition across. And we've seen this 
huge destruction, I guess we can say manufacturing jobs in the USA, they have just been plummeting. So what we could actually see is manufacturing coming back to the USA. Will it happen under this administration? Probably not. But I think it could happen under the next administration if, certainly if it flips. Even such things as raising a child now is more expensive. To raise a child to the age of 17 in the USA is $310,605. And that was based on a child born in 2015. So you think you have three children, you're well over a million dollars. So all of these costs are going up. And it's not just that, we'll look at childcare in a moment, but look at health trends. So look at the premiums here. Premiums for family coverage cost an average of $7,061 in 2001. And it rose to an average of 22,221 in 2021. So over that 20 year increase then, that was a 215% increase. But then if you look at inflation here, over that same period was approximately 57%. So you can see something just doesn't add up here. We are seeing this mass industrial complex of the pharmaceutical industry and medicine outpacing inflation by four times here. So we know there's something going on here. We know that this is just a huge profit-making uh, industry now. And who's being affected? Well, it's the middle class. And we can see where these premiums have gone up. Uh, change in health insurance costs, just this is 22 to 23, by the way. Um, look at these areas shaded in purple here. Alaska, 15%. New Mexico, 15%. Colorado, almost 20%. Wyoming, 15.5%. Georgia, over 20%. So that's the highest increase. But these increase are dramatic. Looping back to childcare then, US workers spend up to 29% of their income on average on childcare for kids younger than five years old. And then just getting a little more granular here then, so 7% is recommended by the US Department of Health and Human Services, and it's now 10% of medium income for a married couple or family but it's 35% of medium income for a single parent. So this is where the difficulty comes in for single parents. But it's not just in your basic staples, of which I haven't even covered today. Housing up dramatically, energy up dramatically, food up dramatically. In fact, as I've mentioned, I think two or three times last week, food inflation, a lot of these undercover investigations and even investigations that aren't undercover are now putting US food inflation at 50% on the staples. These things are definitely worth watching. If you haven't seen any of these reports, um, YouTube videos and other such things, absolutely fascinating reports, which just blows government data out the water, which we know is a lie anyway. We know US inflation is closer to 13%. We know UK inflation is closer to 21%, not the 10.5% that they put out there. But even looking at that, uh, official figures, USA 7.5%, UK 10.5%. This is something that not just myself, there's a lot of us, a lot of you in the comments were saying this back right at the start that this was going to happen. And for those of you who believe and listen to the, you know, the government and the advisors and the media, uh, the Federal Reserve, Bank of England, the ECB, all of these experts, supposedly the, the greatest economic financial minds on the planet, they all got this wrong. Inflation won't happen. There's just no way. 2008, it didn't happen when we created all this new currency. It won't happen again. Guess what? It happened. Okay, well, it's just transitory. It, it will go away. It won't go past 4%. Guess what? It goes past 4%. Okay, but it won't go past 8%. It went past 8%. Okay, it'll only last for a few months. It, last, it was prolonged. Okay, so you cannot listen to these people. I, I know I drum this into you a lot, but it's important. You cannot listen to these people and these forecasts. They are not there to serve you, even though that is their role to serve you. 
they are not there for that. They are there to protect the US dollar and protect the government. Okay, now let's look then at a couple of other metrics that we're seeing. Concert tickets, sports games, the average Super Bowl ticket approach $10,000. $10,000 where the most expensive ticket this year was $40,000. These prices are crazy, but it's not just that. We also have streaming and cable. These prices are up dramatically. Just look at these numbers as we went into 2022. And how are the average people dealing with this? Well, it's exactly what we forecast. They would use credit cards to fill the gap, and that's exactly what's happening. But it gets worse than this. Not only are people using credit cards, but 80% of people now are spending through their savings just to get by. And we can go even more granular. How are middle-class consumers handling inflation? Uh, well, look, people are saying they're going to work longer before retirement. They're gonna cut back, pause, saving in an emergency fund, again, very dangerous because not only is this happening, but people are eating through their emergency fund. They're delaying car repairs and maintenance. Again, not ideal, can be dangerous. People are trying to find a higher paying job. But then right at the bottom, again, very risky. Some people are saying none of these, they're not gonna do anything. And again, this is worrying because what do I expect with unemployment? I don't buy into any of these figures. And a lot of other YouTubers are buying into these figures as well. They think unemployment's gonna stay low. I don't. I know there's a massive glut in jobs and there's a lot of jobs available, just not enough people to fill them. But it, it gets a lot more complicated than this. We'll, we'll cover that in another video. But people thinking that they're just gonna take on more jobs and they're gonna look for higher income jobs and things like that, I think people are gonna get a shock later on in this year as the recession gets deeper that we're apparently not in. Now, I just wanna wrap up by looking at where middle-class wealth is, so the 50 to 90 uh, percentile. It's mainly in real estate and pensions. So I'm gonna tell you why this is so dangerous right now. The average person, middle-class person, has absolutely maxed out their mortgage and other debts while the debt was cheap and while it was very easy to service it. But now, if you think about where the housing market is going to go, and I mean, spoiler alert here, I think we're probably gonna see five to 10% drop in the USA this year. However, we could see a 20% drop if things really get a lot more extreme. And again, it will be on a region by region basis. Areas where you've seen a massive increase, you're gonna see a massive uh, decrease. Areas where you saw a small increase, you're probably gonna see a small decrease. But there's a lot more compl complexity to it. I just did a one hour long macro video, I think it was even longer than that this month, in the private community where I go through all the, the metrics. So just a reminder, if you haven't ever looked at those videos, they are really interesting to watch because they go back quite a number of years and you can see the forecasts I made and how they came to fruition. And now you can see the forecasts I'm making right now, uh, which will enable you to invest better for those of you who are investors. But the really worrying thing for me as we see all of this is that I just can't see a way out of this debt trap at the moment. People spending more on their credit cards and running through their savings. Most people have run through their savings at this stage. I can't see a way out of this yet as wages are starting to stagnate. Yeah, they might go up a little bit, but inflation, wages have got to get above inflation is what I'm saying. I'm just not seeing this for a while yet. So my advice would be batten down the hatches, buckle down, because most people aren't. See, most people, the average person in the West thinks that the government's going to come in again, bail them all out with free money, and they're just going to take care of the, the problem. They're not. In fact, in the USA, the emergency measures that were enacted under COVID end in May this year. So they end. So all those benefits are going to end. And if you think all those people are going to rush back to the workplace when they've been paid not to work for three years, I would think again. So I hope this was useful today. I hope this was valuable. Thank you to everyone who took my 
finance and macro course over the weekend. I've had so many uh, positive comments and messages coming through already. So thank you so much for saying such great things about the course. And if you want to learn more about it, you can find it below in the description. All right, thank you so much for watching today. I hope this helped to understand what's happening with the middle class and exactly where all of these problems are coming in, where all the squeezes are coming in and where we are going in the near future. Thanks for watching. Take care. God bless. I will see you tomorrow.